You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hello there, everyone. Welcome to a very special edition of the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm Stephanie Haney here with a bonus episode for you because you know here on the Three Things to Know podcast, we love to celebrate when big names come to Northeast Ohio. And we have two very big names joining us here in the Cleveland area, and that's happening on Sunday, May 1st. I am talking about the power couple, married couple, Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody. Now, you know them from their many, many successes. Catherine is an Obie Award-winning writer and actor. Mandy is an Emmy winner. He's a Tony winner. You know him from Homeland, lots of other projects as well. He had a 30-city concert tour at the end of 2019 and into 2020. These two are quite busy, and you might know them from social media because they had quite the social media moment during the pandemic. And I got to talk with them about that a little bit earlier today, and now I get to share that conversation with you because they are coming here to Cleveland for a first. This is the first time that they've been invited to do this sort of live interview experience as a couple. And it's no surprise to anyone that's been following them on social media because lots of people have been asking them, hey, we wanna see more. We wanna see more of the real, raw Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody. We wanna see what that's about. I talked to them about that too. So uh, I think you'll be intrigued as I was to hear what they have to say about whether we might see anything more along those lines from them. But this is a first and they are coming here to Cleveland. They're going to be part of an event that is hosted by the Cleveland Jewish News and Medical Mutual. And the event is called An Evening with Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody. And I got to chat with them about what to expect, which is going to be a bit of a surprise for all of us. And we'll hear what they have to say about that. And then also what they have going on, how their social media experience has kind of shaped what they're doing now and how it's really helped them. Here's what's very cool about them because listen, what they were doing on social media with the help of one of their sons throughout the pandemic was really kind of showcasing everything their fun moments, their argumentative moments, their silly moments, their frustrated moments, all of the moments that we were really experiencing and they were doing it as people who are now in their late 60s and their 70s. So we were experiencing what that's like. So many of us resonating with the fact, you know, that we couldn't be together with our family members and all of that. So that all played into it too. And as they're doing this, as they're sharing their experiences, they're doing with an eye towards highlighting social justice issues. And we got to talk a lot a bit of, a lot about that too. And the social, social justice issues, the world issues that are really important to them that they're working towards making sure get showcased as well. So they're not just trying to be TikTok famous to add to the long list of things that they are well known for. And it's Instagram too, by the way, their following is just, it's just really blown up on Instagram because that's where these videos are. And uh, it's fun, it's fun and they're fun and you'll see it. So we've got the conversation here. And then of course, we'll let you know again, I'm gonna double up and let you know what you need to know in order to be able to attend this event, which is coming up on Sunday, May 1st, right here in Cleveland and how you can follow them on social media. So let's get right to that conversation now with Mandy and Catherine. Mandy, Catherine, thank you for joining me on the Three Things to Know podcast. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you for having us. We are so excited to be having you here in Cleveland. You'll be here in Cleveland. It's a, you're putting on an event. It's called the Cleveland Jewish News and Medical Mutual Presentation, an evening with Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody. Wanted to make sure I get it right for everybody who's Google searching it and making sure that they know how to get the tickets, which we'll talk about at the end here. Uh, Thank you so much for coming here to Cleveland. You know, we've all gotten to know you so well on social media. Before we get into just our conversation, can you tell us a little bit about what we can expect at this evening, which is coming up here on Sunday? Yes. No, <laughs> no, Stephanie, we have no idea what you'll expect. We don't have a clue. We have <laughs> never done this before, meaning it's the first time we've been asked to be interviewed as a couple. Uh, and uh, I guess because of all the things that our son has 
uh, done to us with social media. <laughs> and, and so we, we looked and we said, okay, we'll do it. And so it'll either, you know, add life to the marriage or it'll be the end. Or it'll be over. You'll watch the marriage <laughs> dissolve in front of your eyes. But um, this is our first trime, uh, trime, trying time uh, of, of trying this. And uh, it's all an experiment for us. So we come see the experiment. All right. So you talk about your sons, you know, you have two sons, of course, Isaac and Gideon. I know you're coming to us right now from Colorado, spending some time out there with family, right? But he wasn't, he wasn't part of kind of the situation that we got to really get to know you about over social media, right? That was Gideon's doing, if I understand that correctly. Yeah, our younger son, yeah. Gideon, was the one who engineered yeah. the social media stuff. Well, it started out, Stephanie, you know, I, I have many critical things to say about social media, ironically, and don't even know how to get on it. <laughs> um, but it was it was both an, uh, addressing the beginnings of the pandemic, you know, where he we had an anniversary of our first date and he asked if he how it went. And we said we had a big fight. And then he said, well, can I post this? I said, what does that mean? You know, and he thought of it originally to get more eyes on our work with the International Rescue Committee. Because we know? birthed the social media. Uh, I also am sort of a Luddite when it comes to technology. But we birthed it with the help of the International Rescue Committee, the IRC, because in 2015, I went over to Lesbos, Greece, when, when 125,000 um, Syrians were trying to get across the Balkan route to sanctuary in Germany. And uh, we know that this problem hasn't uh, you know, subsided. We can talk about that later anyway. Um, so we did it to during, uh, we, we birthed the social media to bring attention to, to the refugee crisis and eyeballs to it. So Gideon, as our son was saying, continue. Well, and he just was upset that there were only a few thousand eyes on it. So he posted us having a fight. No, talking it, it about, was post-fight. It was post-fight, but he asked how we celebrate our anniversary. I said, we had a big fight. We described the big fight. It was right at the beginning of the pandemic. And she remembered every part of the fight. I remember. Yes, nothing. right. Even though it happened five minutes before. And, you know, <laughs> suddenly, somehow, the fact that people that look like us had a fight, survived the fight, made up for the fight was, I don't know, interesting, amusing, uh, reassuring to people. And that's and really what happened. Was he, put, he said, you know, I think this is kind of sweet and a lot of people could relate to it. You mind if we put it on? If I put it, if would you put it on your social media? And, and I said, I don't know how to do that. I have everybody at IRC do it. We okay everything, but I don't. He said, no, I know how to do it. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it for you. And then it went nuts. And he said, he initially said, I thought it would bring more eyeballs to the refugee crisis. So go ahead. And it went crazy. And, uh, and then we quickly realized, oh my God, the pandemic, we're all terrified of everything at the beginning. And it seems like people are, are, are getting a smile out of this. Uh, if we're a part of helping anybody smile, including ourselves, don't stop. Well, so we also, just yeah, and it also seemed like you know somehow we became the parents people couldn't get to see, you know, because well, we we're all isolated. That. Yeah, you didn't know that. A nope. lot of people were saying, "Oh no, <laughs> it made me miss my parents," you know, but I feel better now. So, um, and then of course, Stephanie, there was the election. So then Gideon and his creative partner, Ewan, said, we're putting you, we're hiring you guys. And we're putting you to work. They worked us really hard. We worked, we worked 24 hours a day, 24-7, getting out the vote. Right. And then Black Lives Matter crisis happened and, uh, you know, execution crises happened and uh, the, the climate change crisis is ongoing, the refugee crisis and now Ukraine. And, and, um, and you know, now we're, introducing um, what's in all the newspapers of how you can sponsor one of the, uh, I think, 100,000 Ukrainians that will be able to be welcomed to the United States for two years. And I'm just learning all of that. And we're going to sign up for it and hope others do too. I was going to say, yeah, IRC obviously heavily involved in, in so many different ret refugee situations. But right now, the most, I guess, recent or most timely that we're talking about is the Ukraine situation with people going to Poland and then here to here to the US. So obviously there's a lot behind what you're doing on the social media situation. And then and if I could just remind us both if I could just remind us all for one second without letting it go. It's not just the Ukraine situation. She hates it when I interrupt, but I, I it's not no, just please. the Ukrainians. It, it, it's the Syrians and the Afghans and and uh, Yemen Sudanese 
All these people must not be forgotten. They're all in a holding pattern in refugee camps, waiting to have a new beginning, a new home, a safe home like all of us wish. Now, please continue. A hundred percent. Absolutely. That's such a great point, too, just because this is the thing that's getting eyeballs and it's sort of the in vogue thing to talk about right now. There are so many people that need so much. And you mentioned all those other situations as well that need this attention brought to it. And it's a unique way to do it. Absolutely. It is resonating with people, the things that you're doing. There's so much relatableness to what you're doing. Now, I'm going to ask you, with this being your first interview together as the couple coming here to Cleveland, it'll be at Case Western Reserve University on Sunday, May 1st. I may be out of the loop on this. I've never hoped that I'm more out of the loop on this because I know that you guys had some interest and some conversations about would you do a show for TV, kind of a behind the scenes situation? Has, I know previously you've said, nope, not necessarily interested in that. Any, any possibility of that kind of coming about? I don't know. <laughs> I like I that know. answer. I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? It, there's, there's been if discussion. It happens, if, well, it happens, if it we'll happens one know. day, we hope you find out about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I will be definitely. There are people. There are people that are talking about this, and we're listening. So. Yeah, we're listening. I also have, you know, agita about why didn't they just stay on the social media? You know? <laughs> so who knows? Did True. You say we're at Western Case Reserve. I thought we we're at the Maltz Performing Arts Center. Are they? The it same? is on the Case Western Reserve oh. campus. It's the Maltz Thank Performing Arts Center. Yep. Going, Stephanie. Okay. Yep. Absolutely. Don't worry. I got your schedule down. <laughs> <laughs> and when that other thing comes about, I'll have that down too. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk a little bit about you said this kind of happened because of your anniversary. You guys got into a little tiff on the anniversary. You talked about it. I would like to hear from you. I know you've talked about it before, but about your first date and the moment you met, because it's such a sweet story. If you don't mind sharing it again. Stephanie, I'm going to find this picture to show you that we just took. This is a story, Stephanie, that we once were in South Africa at very lovely people's house that we didn't know very well, and they asked how we met. So he told his version of the story, which to me destroyed the story because he left out all the good details. Then I told the story and we put these people to sleep and we made a decision that from now on, whoever asked that question. Oh, look at this. Is this, this is date one, huh? This is, this is the 44th anniversary, which was April 16th, this last, you know, just a short time ago, where we had our first kiss and first date at Washington and 11th Street in the village. And we, tr and we went back there to recreate our first kiss and our first moment where I said to her, I'm going to marry you. And she said, you don't know what you're talking don't, about. Don't, honey, really? Oh my God. <laughs> That is not how I, I was right. I was right. I was right. <laughs> so. yeah. the, 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 the true story is that we were doing a play together. The only thing I was sure of, Stephanie, when I was in my 20s was I was going to have a life in the theater. I was going to be a mother and I was never going out with an actor. OK, those were my things. I did the play. It was a short run. Um, and at the end of the play, he gave me a package. And I was afraid to open it in front of him because I didn't know him. We had just worked together for two weeks. And it was a card that said, with my love, my hopes, my dreams. And I thought, oh my God, this kid is nuts. Because when the playwright asked me what I thought about Mandy in the beginning of rehearsal, I said, he's great. I love working with him. Oh, you mean for me personally? I said, no way. He's a baby. He's six years younger than me. He's an actor. No way two in a family. Three, he is a little extreme. No, the <laughs> next person I'm going to be with is going to be the father of my kids, and it's not him. So that was that. The play ends. He gives me the package. I open it at home. I call him up, and I say, I love, 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 love the shawl, and I like the blouse. And he said, you hated the blouse, huh? Where I met, well, I've never bought clothes for a woman before. I wasn't sure about the blouse. And my heart just broke. Then we talked for three hours. Feel free to use that line anyway. <laughs> yeah. We talked for three hours and um, made a date for brunch. And uh, I had to tell him how to get to the village, which was another check mark against him because I thought Jesus I'd always you know? been on the upper west side yeah. where I went to school and he he walked into that restaurant that is no longer there but was on that corner with a little pat uh yellow pan, button mums yellow button mums and a camera and he said I have one thing to say to you before brunch I said what's that he said I'm gonna marry you and when she went like that I took a picture and I said you're gonna <laughs> get very hurt 
I don't believe in marriage. And I gave him my whole, you know, Russian anarchist lecture, which I didn't know myself well enough to know that wasn't me. And here we are. I shut up. I listened to the lecture and I married him. Yeah. Hey, I think that might be a very good life lesson, probably on both of our, both of our sides, both on anybody's sides. Shut up and listen and then see what happens. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> and it's also, you know, you said you were in your early 20s. It's so uh, interesting. You know, you think about it. Six years seems like a lifetime in your early 20s. A little well, bit later, then yeah. realize not so much. No, I mean, I'd had relationships. You know, I, I was a little more experienced. This guy, he was young. <laughs> he was really young. I still am. Yes, and he yes. came in hot. He said, I'm marrying you. And you said, yeah. okay, we'll see, buddy. Yeah, right. <laughs> a little tip in there, if you caught it or not, the little yellow button mums were the cheapest flower I could find at the stand. When I got off the subway, they put some little white spriggy things in them. So those of you that are just starting your anniversary or haven't picked the flower and about to pick it, pick a cheap one so you can afford it through all the years. <laughs> Come what may. I was going to ask you, what was the significance of the yellow mums? I love that it was a, a thrifty last minute choice. Cheap. It was cheap. <laughs> cheap is another word for it, for sure. And then so, so you went on, you said one of the other things you were certain of was about being a mother. You do have two children, Isaac and Gideon. We know now that Gideon is responsible for the camera work behind a lot of the social media stuff. You two, incredibly talented performers, very accomplished. Your son's also in the performance field. How did you feel about that when your sons decided to go that route as well? Well, why couldn't they have been a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> what well, is wrong with the doctor? <laughs> I, uh, you know, we, we had basically one family mantra, raising our kids. What was uh, that? Well, it was to follow your heart, oh, that's right. not be a sheep, follow your heart. Uh, not to be an entitled person, you know, to respect people from every <clears throat> walk of life, from every economic division, and um, and to see what your passion is. Find out what your passion is. You yeah, know? don't follow. If you don't follow that dream, you'll never forgive yourself. So follow it. Try. See how it goes. And 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 the best things that happen in life, whether you succeed or not, it's not the success; it's the failures. Failures teach us everything. And they're not, uh, they're not bad things, they're gifts. And Ain't so that the don't truth? Freak out. Those don't, learning don't moments. Right. That's yeah. the, yeah. You learn nothing when things go well. It's like pat on the back and you just go down the road. Absolutely. You learn, you learn everything in between the lines. In between the lines for sure. And in between all of the things that you're working on, all of the things that you're raising awareness to, you know, uh, some of the projects, a lot of things obviously have been put on hold for such a long time. Are there any other latest projects, you know, love that you're doing this interview series? It will be, you know, as you know, a fan and somebody on their side, we'd love to see more of those, but any other projects that you have in the works or anything you could talk about right now? Uh, I'm uh, going to be doing a, a show uh, on Hulu uh, called Career Opportunities murder and mayhem uh i think that's the whole title it's the longest title of anything i've ever been in and uh it's a murder mystery a la a la knives out uh, murder on the orient express and stuff i play i had a lot of fun with it i play who, uh, a man who was once the world's greatest detective catherine says quiet mandy so <laughs> <laughs> who was once the world's greatest and uh, I'm from Brighton England so I get to have an accent and and uh, and it's a lot of fun so that I'll go film that uh, August through November I'm not sure when they're going to put it on the air but it's out there in the press so people are, know about it I actually I can't tell you about the things people don't know about yet <laughs> I actually am going to do a workshop in November in Rosendale's theater in upstate New York with my collaborator and director Timothy Neer, who was one of my close friends in college. She's directed two solo shows I've done, A Mom's Life and Falling Apart Together. This one's called The Unexpected Third. And we're doing a two week workshop up there. I'm slightly terrified. Because and what is The Unexpected Third? Mean? It's like everything that happens in this period of life. Because- And I, what is this period? Th of life? Well, this is the elder period. <laughs> but, but you know, one of the things I think also, um, is responsible for the social media stuff has to do with the unexpected third. There is so little, Stephanie, in our cultural zeitgeist where people that look like us have personalities, are eccentric, are their idiosyncratic selves. You're usually on the floor saying, help, help, or selling friggin' depends, or in a, you know, 
some kind of nursing home. It just pisses me off. I am that, available though to sell the pens. Yeah, in right. Case no, anybody he wants is not. He is not. I won't let him do that. <laughs> So I just want, I have been frustrated by the lack of seeing whatever generation I'm in for years, whether it's who I was in my 50s, 60s, and now 70s. So I just would like to explore how we're not finished yet. Do you know? Yes. That's, that's an essential um, challenge to also believe that you're not finished yet, that there's unexpected, joyful, and challenging things to happen. Yeah. So that's what I'll be looking at, hopefully with some humor and not just despair. <laughs> I just I just thought of something else I forgot to mention that people will kill me if I don't. Um, when uh, the pandemic got a little better before BA2 started, but then uh, we just had our second booster and, and BA2 seems to be not so bad. Um, but there was that article in the New York Times about, you know, the, if you've had the first two vaccines and the first booster, you should be pretty good along the way. And even if you do get sick, they have the viral medicine now. So, you know, it's not it's not such a crisis moment anymore. So I said to my bookers, OK, I'll start doing concerts. So I got together with my piano player. We've been rehearsing. I took my first concert is going to be May 25th in Baltimore, Maryland. And then I've taken some others along the way. And then my kids uh, live up here in the mountains at 9,000, 10,000 feet in Colorado. So every morning I take a walk because we're here visiting and, and it's very, you know, it's where the runners come, you know, this high up to train. And, and so we're, you know, we're whatever age we're at, but it's wonderful. We got very excited this morning because every day we have less trouble breathing. And today we, we had two miles up yeah, two and miles two miles back. back. And today we had no trouble breathing. And I even ran the whole concert without, while I was walking, which I wasn't able to do the other days because I was just, and, and so if you just get out and do it and we do it every day, you feel better. And then I stopped eating sugar and I felt a hundred percent better. And, and then I could give you the whole list of things I'm trying to do to stay alive. <laughs> That is such a good message too. you know, just keep doing those things. And if you can keep doing those things, you know, if you're well, and of course, you know, talk to your doctors or whatever, we're, we're not doctors here. I'm no doctor, but if you keep doing the things, then you can keep doing the things. And that's so great to hear. And that is some intense conditioning, by the way, congratulations. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was so, I, I was thrilled this morning. It was, a, I've been here nine days. He's only been here five. And it was the first time I wasn't like feeling like I was dying going up the hill. You know, but so she's good. she's an animal when it comes to you know yes, going up. I, I I can't you, you can't compete with her. She never takes a nap. She's you know got more energy than any human being I've ever known. She wakes up in the morning, has her coffee, has twenty two phone calls, thirty six Zoom meetings, has twelve breakfasts, three lunches, four dinners, goes to ten matinees, five evening this performances. This is talking about my old life. No, so no, no. About this my is pre-pandemic. I life. you have I don't know how this person does what she does. I need a nap, or I'm a dead man. We yeah. need more of Mandy and Catherine. That's what we need. <laughs> you two are great. And I have to say to you too, I've spent some time in Colorado. One of my dearest friends in the world lives in Denver. And I know exactly what you're talking about. I get winded out there. Red Rocks Amphitheater, can't make it up the stairs. So yeah, yeah. you guys are just, it's incredible to hear it. And we're so excited to have you here in Cleveland. Before we let you go here, I want to give everyone a reminder where they can see you. It's Sunday, May 1st, and we'll see you at 7 p.m. You can get tickets either in person or streaming. If you are one of those people who aren't necessarily super comfortable getting into the mix, those are available. It's at the Malls Performing Arts Center, as you said, Catherine, and that's at the Case Western Reserve University campus. And the link is cgn.org slash Patinkin. So that's where we can see you coming here in Cleveland. Very excited to be hosting you for this first interview and very excited to see what may come from it. Thank you two so much for spending time with us today. Thank, Thank you, you for having us, Stephanie. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much. Pleasure. And we'll see everybody in Cleveland. Yes, we cannot for wait for it. Thanks for coming ahead of time. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye. What did I tell you? Are they not just, they're so fun. They are, they are great and their energy is infectious. So when I asked them if we might be seeing some things, if maybe there have been more conversations picking up, because listen, it was about a year ago when they just said, no, not a, not really gonna happen. And now to hear that uh, there are maybe conversations happening and they are interested and they are, participating in those conversations that makes me very happy for us and it makes me very happy for the internet because 
like I said, we need more Mandy and Catherine. They are precious. And what about that story, that first meeting story? Oh, I love it. With the yellow mums, budget friendly. It's the way to go. It's not about the dollar amount. Okay, so let's get to what you need to know in Enio. We covered this with them. They talked about it, but I want to be super clear. I want to reiterate it for everyone because it's not every day we get these wonderful people here in Northeast Ohio. We get a lot of wonderful people here in Northeast Ohio, but very excited for this one-time event, the first of its kind for Mandy and Catherine. This is an evening with Mandy Patinkin and Catherine Grody, okay? And it's put on by the Cleveland Jewish News and Medical Mutual, and it's happening Sunday, May 1st. Now, as we said, it's both in person and live stream. So if you are not feeling up to getting into the mix, that's okay. The tickets are available at cjn.org slash Patinkin. And I will have this linked on wkyc.com. It'll be linked in the information if you're watching this on YouTube. It'll be linked in the show notes if you're listening to this on a podcast platform. It's at 7 p.m. on Sunday. It's at the Maltz Performing Center, which is on the Case Western Reserve University campus. And that brings me to a good follow. And of course, a good follow for this bonus episode is Mandy and Catherine. And they share an account. It's under Mandy Patinkin on Instagram. So it's M-A-N-D-Y-P-A-T-I-N-K-I-N. That's where you can follow them on Instagram. I promise you, it is a good follow. You will be smiling, you will be laughing, you will be nodding your head in agreement. Sometimes you will be thinking, yes, I just had actually that same argument or conversation with my partner, or I just had that same conversation with my parent or what have you. It's good stuff, so you're gonna wanna check it out. All right, that's it for this bonus edition of the Three Things to Know podcast. Thank you all for being here. If you're enjoying the show, please, as I ask you always, share it with a friend and also subscribe if you haven't already and leave a rating and a review because it is so helpful for us when we're connecting with more people here in Northeast Ohio. And that's what it's all about. We wanna be in your ears and we wanna be in your eyes if you're watching us on YouTube as well or on Instagram because now the podcast is also available on the WKYC Instagram page, which is WKYC3. And I'll just say one more time as well, Shoot me a message if there is something particular you think we should talk about on the podcast. You can find me at underscore Stephanie Haney on Twitter and Instagram. You can also go old school and you can just email me at shaney at wkyc.com. All right, that's it for this bonus episode. I will see you next time on Three Things to Know. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.